I had this dream recently. I was getting on a bus in Coogee and the bus driver looked just like Bruce Willis. Well, of course, I didn't want to say anything because I know Bruce Willis wouldn't be caught dead driving a bus unless it was on fire. Or maybe there was a bomb on board and Keanu Reeves was having the day off. But when he asked for my password instead of a ticket, I started to get suspicious. You see, even though it was a dream, it felt like it wasn't. Well, apart from the fact he wasn't wearing a shirt, which seemed a bit strange, but I didn't want to ask if the tattoo of the succubus on his right shoulder really was Demi Moore, even if I could read her initials in red ink. Well, you know what bus drivers are like. One wrong word and you're off the bus. And then he asked me again, what's your password? And I said, try hard, thinking he was just some Bruce Willis look-alike in need of an Ashley and Martin makeover. And he said, Wrong answer, asshole. Well, that's when I realised he really was John Tryhard McLean. And he said, You have ten seconds to give me the correct password or I'll stick my gun up your skinny white ass and we'll see what Santa ate for Christmas. Which is pretty stupid. Because I don't believe in Santa. But he wasn't to know that, was he? But I understood the gun up skinny white ass clear enough. So I said, as I was going to St. Ives, I met a man with seven wives. And he said, Climb aboard, motherfucker. Which was great. Because I've never been to St. Ives. Or met a man with seven wives. But he wasn't to know that, was he? When I got on the bus, I noticed it was full of Hollywood actors. Apart from Cristiano Ronaldo, who was busy having his hair done by Tom Cruise in a red jumpsuit. When the next seat there was some guy in a black latex bodysuit who had to be Mel Gibson because of the gag in his mouth and the way he kept trying to climb out the window and shout at passing traffic. And behind him Cameron Diaz and Lindsay Lohan were singing God Bless America in matching hot pink bikinis while John Travolta played the trumpet in white flares and Barack Obama played the harmonica dressed like Bob Dylan. I didn't ask what he was doing on the bus. I just assumed he was on his way to some Hollywood fundraiser. Or maybe he decided to become an actor after all. Well, by now I really needed to sit down, but the only seat available was next to Lady Jane Seymour Fonda, who for some reason was dressed as a psychedelic nun. Well, don't get me wrong, I like nuns as much as the next guy, probably more. And I think she's a wonderful actor who looks amazing for 74, but I'm not a priest. So what chance did I have of introducing her to my new sofa bed? Of course, I think older women can be very attractive for older men. But before I could sit down, she looked at me with her big blue eyes and she said, What's your password, darling? Well, that's when I stopped staring at her pink fishnets, which I never knew nuns were allowed to wear, and tried to remember what movie she'd been in recently. But my mind was blank and my heart was racing and I knew this could be my last chance to go for a ride with an A-list Hollywood celebrity. Well, that's when Meryl Streep started moaning in the back seat. It would sound like a bad case of stomach cramps. And suddenly I remembered a film about a beautiful young woman who travels from planet to planet having sexual intercourse with aliens while trying to stop an evil scientist with a magic penis from trying to take over the world. And I said, Barbarella! The whole bus started clapping. Meryl Streep started whistling. It felt like I'd won an Oscar for Best Password, if they give Oscars for that, which I think they should. Well, that's when Lady Fonda looked at me with a twinkle in her eye and said, why don't you sit in my lap? I don't remember what happened after that, but I think we went back to her place to practice lunar landings and watch Barbarella in 3D.